Hello and welcome back to another VOD review where you're watching the Chengdu Hunters taking on the New York Excelsior. So the Chengdu Hunters have been dominant so far throughout this tournament. They have a stupidly easy schedule though. They 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 play, I think, the bottom four East teams in this tournament. They dodged they dodged Shanghai, they dodged Philly, and they dodge um Seoul. So they, and they play everyone else. So they have a very easy schedule. So I expect them to be dominant throughout this, uh, throughout the East. Uh, but they, you know, they, they've been putting on a show and I think you can make arguments that they are the best team in the world right now, especially with Dallas and the Shanghai Dragons heavily struggling. I'm a big fan of the Hunters. I think the way that they're playing the game is right. I think they have a lot of flexibility. They can go back and forth uh, with Leave and Jinmu playing the Sombra Tracer or playing the Farah, uh, Farah Tracer or something like that. So... I really like the way the Hunters are playing the game. I think they're cracked and jacked. On the other hand, the New York Excelsior, uh, they're looking solid. They're okay in this meta. They're not great. They're okay. Uh, they don't play too much of the Farah. They play a lot of Guangbung on the hit scan, which is interesting. It's kind of like a different look for them, but they don't really play too much Flora Feather. They do it from time to time. They really play a bit of everything, actually, now that I think about it. We have seen them play, like, multiple different looks. Uh, but MYXL is in trouble. And let me explain why MYXL is in trouble. And I'm going to talk about this on broadcast. And I talked about it on Plaid Chat. But let me just let me just explain it for you guys. Why the New York Excelsior is in trouble. Okay? New York Excelsior is 2-2. Two and two, So they lose this match. Just quick spoilers. Sorry if, uh, if I just spoiled it for you. They lose this match. They are 2-2 two and two with a zero map differential. They are... The only way they can qualify is if Spark and Charge both don't win by two ma uh, two matches. And Spark doesn't have, like... It's, obviously, they can still make it if Spark has a really low map score. But here, it's unlikely that Spark and Charge are going to go 2-0 this weekend. Because Charge just isn't very good. And Spark has to play the Chengdu Hunters. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, the New York Excelsior will qualify for the Countdown Cup. Which is important because if we go to the regular season, they are currently... Seven and seven, uh, seven uh, league points, and they are done with their matches. So, for them to qualify, because Spark have a plus seven map differential on them, even if Spark goes 0 and 3 in both of their upcoming matches, they will still lose out, and New York Excelsior will still lose out to the Hongzhou Spark and will not be eligible for play in. So, for New York Excelsior to continue their lives in the the Overwatch League season and make it into the play-ins, they have to get a Countdown Cup League point. So, this is why it is very important that they do get into the Countdown Cup and make it to Hawaii. And not just make it into Hawaii over Fusion, Soul, or Hunters. They need to win one of their matches in the Hawaii Final Countdown Playoffs where they will get one point. So, if you're a New York Excelsior fan, I've just drawn out your path forward. Good luck. You're gonna fucking need it. Um, so, you know, that's that's where we are at with the New York Excelsior. So we're gonna have a look at them here. Um, we're gonna have a look at them here and sort of break down these two teams. Obviously, I really want to look at the Hunters because they are the team that I think a lot of people are hailing as the favorites. Obviously, you can make arguments for the Atlanta Reign, the Philadelphia Fusion, the Seoul Dynasty. But with the Shanghai Dragons and the Dallas Fuel being out, I think Hunters are the team to beat. Uh, let's just get into the review, start breaking it down, and start having a look. Alright, so MYXL is going to come out with the McCree Wrecking Ball and a Brig. So I don't love this comp by the MYXL. I think if you're going to play the McCree Anna, I would much prefer to just see them play an Orisa. Maybe the Wrecking Ball is better on control, but for the most part, I feel like the Anima Cree just doesn't synergize very well with everything else. Their dive's going to be weak. Their, their backline's going to be weak. I think it's going to be hard to make anything work. They really just have to hope Guangbong pops the fuck off. Alright, Kalios doing his, his his classic fly into orbit. And here's what I don't like about this MYXL comp, right? Because you were playing the Macriana, 
So you're not moving very fast and you're not playing, you don't have that range. They're going to get cornered a lot, right? So they're stuck in this room with Jinmu just playing above them. And it's going to be very hard for them to take that space. But also, Flora and Yakpung is going to be very hard to deal with, you know, just the backline themselves. They're going to have to get through Late Young and Monk to kill, you sort of punish the backline. And Leave is just playing Sombra and just running around them. So it's, we're kind of in a stalemate here. Time for Kalios to go again. <laughs> My planet needs me. You stay, I go. Jimmy's gonna get a barrage. All right, they're gonna dive. Oh, oh they nano Guangbung and he hits the shot. I actually really want to see if this works. I want to see this tech from Nisha. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, there's no way that res comes off, right? Yeah, the answer was yes, there is no way that res comes off. I was like, does Nisha know something I don't? <laughs> So that young gets nanoed in the room. Oh, good, good punish on a Jonak. Find him on the point, isolated. All right, now they killed Friday. It is indeed not Friday. Flora gets hacked, gets got, and good play. So that even though like Guangbung hits hit a couple of great shots onto the backline, uh, just not enough to give them the win. This is the first map. Who's your top contender for the Dennis Walker Award? Uh, I think there's a couple of good options, especially over the last little bit. I actually think Jake's done a really good job this year as a player of supporting uh, a lot of great causes, being a positive influence, saving Dante from embarrassing himself. Honestly, it might go to Jake. We'll see. EMP was not great by leave. This is a dangerous EMP because Guangbung's there. I actually don't mind that EMP looking at it from his perspective. Jin moves in. Nano. Oh, good sleep from Jonak. Let's catch this one. Who votes on the Huoka Award? I don't even know if it is a vote. I think it's just more of a a bunch of people talk about it and stuff. I, I've never been a part of the decision or anything like that. Damn chicken. Thank you for the three months. Jimmy for MVP? I don't know about that one. If we know anything about the Dennis Walker Award, though, it is that uh, whoever gets it is going to end up retiring. So I don't know if you want it to go to Jake, if you're a fan of Jake. Literally every person who has gotten the Dennis Walker Award has retired uh, pretty soon after that. Clean sleep by Jonak, but still, once again, not enough. Yeah, my TV, big. Uh, he's going to be careful of the high noon. And you can sort of see what I was talking about, right? Just like watching how this match is playing out. MYXL just can't... It feels like they're never able to take space. It feels like the amount of pressure the Hunters are putting on, they don't have anything to apply pressure in a different direction. And the same thing can be said for the person who's like, let's play Arista double hit scan. Is it makes it impossible to do anything, right? You just get caught in this loop of like... You try and take space, and as soon as you try and take the space, they dive you and you die. And because you committed so many resources to trying to deal with the Farrah, it just doesn't work. Who's there as a work award winner season one and season three? Uh, I got it. Uh, sorry, Mickey got a season one, I got a season two, and McGravy got a season three. Good res for Nisha. Oh, God. Yeah, that's tragic. That is the worst feeling when you're a Pharaoh or a Mercy and you like use your gra you use your air and then you get high noon as soon as you do that. Oh, Yakpung gets owned. Feel like uh, Korean Chinese players get shafted for the award because of language barriers? Yes and no. Um, I would say, like, because here, here's a big misconception. We're just going on a tangent here. Here's a big misconception about the Dennis Walk Award. The Dennis Walker Award is not for the most popular player or people who think they is, like, always, like, just, like, they are a nice person or people like them a lot. It's about someone who has positive impact change, and it generally goes to people who do a lot for charity work and, uh, 
sort of donate to charity, try and run some events, do a bunch of things for positing positive influence actually in the community outside of just like the game, right? So that is what we're hoping for. And people like, there's been a lot of things for people to advocate. And why I say Jake is probably the best. He, I think he has stood for a lot of great things uh, this year. Activision Blizzard, he's donated some money to that. I think he's done a bunch of like uh, other charity things. And I know he's done a lot in the past. So I think he is a good candidate for that. Jake say donate, and that's the thing. I think the biggest thing would be awareness of these kind of things. Uh, not as much the language barrier, but awareness. And I maybe there are a couple of Korean or Chinese players that have done great things for that. You know, like I think uh, Nisha speaking up for you know, you know LGBTQ rights, right, and sort of like being openly active, sort of making it a safe space. Uh, I think that's awesome as well. Like there's a bunch of people that you could uh, give a nod to. But as I said, you know, it's hard to choose one. A lot of people do great things, so we'll see. Turd Blossom, thank you for the Prime Gaming sub. If you gave it to talent, Brent or Sideshow could be good shouts. Yeah, absolutely. They've done, you know, Brent and Sideshow always do a lot of great things. Niche is in trouble. He is getting peppered. Yeah, I think it's time to get out of this one, Chengdu. So Jimnu actually switches to Tracer. And I think this is a massive thing for the Hunters. Their ability to switch from Pharah Mercy to like... Tracer Sombra Brig, like off, off the drop of a bat, uh, off the, at the drop of a hat, that's what I was going for, at the drop of a bat, <laughs> at the drop of a hat, uh, is, is very valuable because all of a sudden Guangbung and Jonah can get very heavily isolated now. What is LGBTQ? <laughs> LGBTQ. Fucking hell. You fucking... BQB stands. <laughs> no, I want barbecue. God damn it. Alright, EMP. Uh, this is just a solo EMP out of Kalios. I actually don't hate this solo EMP though, because he has bomb. And it is guaranteed to isolate them. Oh, Gaga goes down though on the other side. Oh, Late Young uses me loses mech. That might have been a little too aggressive from my boy Late Young. Late Young has been very impressive. Both Elsa and Late Young. I was very critical of both Elsa and Late Young coming into this season, but both of them have proven me wrong. So it was disappointing to see Elsa retire, but it's cool to see both of these players stepping up when given the opportunity on a good team, right? Obviously, their teams historically have been subpar, and now that they're on a good team, they're able to show their uh, their skills. Monk goes down. Damn, dude. Pulse bomb was. This has kind of been a throw from the Hunters. They're in a good spot, but I feel like Gaga and Lei Young getting picked here, and they're just. Oh, Leave gets. How does Leave get got by a mech? Um. Oh, brutal. Bonk. That rally from Friday is just the problem. Flora's dead. That's just, did Flora just stick Nisha back to back? I think he might have. Clean. Ready for battle. I think this is a pretty good meta. I actually kind of like this meta. I think it's interesting. I think you're seeing a lot of teams do a lot of different things. As you said, teams playing to their strengths. Rather than just being like, oh, we have to play Winston, Lucio, and Moira or something like that. Nisha ever get rally? Maybe not. He just got stuck like a couple of times. So you could have been right about that. Do you think, still think the remake should be nerfed? It's... I think the radius should just be nerfed and I'd be fine with the damage. Because it is a little fun thing. And that like it, the way it was used by late young, uh, by uh, Kalios there was really smart. And I think that's good. I My biggest issue is like the radius can be enormous at times. If it had damage full off, the further you go from radius, it'd be really good. Nisha is heavily struggling to stay alive right now. Peace out, Liz. He shouldn't have used his grapple there. Oh, I got double shot by the Nana, uh, the Anna, and then Guangbun cleans it up as well. I think Nisha got a little low there. Don't worry, Anthony's in charge, guys. Nothing could go wrong.
And Mike's had a real clean fight. Yeah, I think they just they did a good job of not allowing Jimmu to get the space, right? I do think Nishi kind of messed up a little bit. Getting a little too low, giving himself an opportunity. They need to try and get a good dive with Gaga and uh, Leaf. I kind of would prefer to see Leaf play the Tracer rather than the Sombra. But I guess against what Yakpong's playing, maybe the Sombra's better. Flora is just making Monk's day life a living hell. Flora is just sticking the Farrah as well. This is kind of crazy. I honestly think MYXL is just playing better. I don't think MYXL has a better comp. I think they're just popping off. Like they're playing really well. Yeah, I think Flora has been a very good player so far this season. I don't think he, he started as well, but he's definitely been popping off. He should be a mainstay for this team going into next season. I kind of like that they're just like Chung uh, MYXL just knows like if we just uh, put a lot of resources into Guangbong, he will carry the game and yet that's fine as long as he carries the game and he is right like they're using all the nanos on him electric cowboy making it very hard for uh for Jinmu like the way that they're playing is like a counter Jinmu style and they're sort of what the, what they're doing is they're countering Jinmu and they're like someone else is going to have to win this game for the hunters leave gaga anyone has to win this game for them and right now no one's stepping up for the hunters like jimmy's just getting pressured away nisha's really struggling to stay with him and it's just falling apart Woo, okay another pulse bomb from floor dude flora has been sticking the world right now Woo. is that the third time he stuck the farrah in this series in in just this map i think it is right and that's just the round. Like, you, I don't think you can come back from that. Alright, Flora, we see you. MYXL's not doing a very good job of cleaning this up from the MYXL, though, right? Like, they should have been able to punish somebody, either the Wrecking Ball or the Diva. They've, they've really played so slowly, but by the time they get back, Jinmu and Nisha are back in this fight. Barrage. Oh, nice sleep by Jonak. I was quick on the trigger. Guangboon gets hit by the mines. But this should still be quite hard for them to catch up. Double support. They just don't have any healing on the point. They're gonna if they can force leave away. Oh nano on the Yak Punk. Wow. Well played. Well played by MYXL. As I said, I don't even think that was a comp. I think just MYXL played very, very well. Rialto is not good for them though. This is 100% a Farrah map. Like, Farrah is just so good on this map. This is going to be hard for the MYXL to hold. I don't think they're going to be able to play as similar of a style. Attackers incoming. Stop the there we go. Hello, I missed the notification. Did I get a Discord notification? I did. Why no Farrah? It is interesting, actually, now that you mention it. Sorry, I was, I was just all tabbed. It is interesting that they're playing the Hanzo Wrecking Ball Zen Brick. I don't really understand the Hanzo here. I guess they're going to play like a counter dive with the Hanzo? And just make it really hard for Yuckpunk to dive? All right, they get Guangbong. Yeah, maybe they just like... Maybe they like the consistency of the Hanzo over the Pharah, right? Like, the, the because as what I said, right? Like, MYXL can't dive effectively with the McCree and the Ana. So maybe they like the Hanzo because it just applies a ton of pressure. Oh, God, Dago got slept. He's out there. This dragon's gonna be savage. That's a problem. That's such a big problem. 
It's giving them so much space. Didn't do as much as I thought it was going to. Nice play. Good EMP. That should just be it. That was pretty clean, methodical play by the Hunters here. Just playing smart, playing slow, just like playing around the Hanzo. Guangdong's actually mirror the, fa the Hanzo. I honestly think Gaga or Yakpong should go Wrecking Ball. I think they would be way better off playing the Wrecking Ball right now as the, playing the Hanzo than the Wrecking Ball. I don't know if they will, and we've actually seen this come from a lot of the teams in the West, right? The Hanzo Wrecking, uh, the Hanzo Orisa. And also uh, primarily teams like uh, Seoul Dynasty and Philadelphia Fusion are both heavily adopting this style with the Orisa. They're like Orisa Hanzo. Wow, another great stick by Flora. Dude, this guy's on something this game. Did I miss a word? Uh, so play the Hanzo uh, play the Hanzo instead of the McCree and then play the Orisa instead of the Bolt if I misspoke there, sorry. Dude, they make it look so easy. Oh, good Diva Bomb from Late Young. Oh, the slam on... Bridge shot? Into the iris. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Don't think that's how that's supposed to work, but here we are. I think Jonak's probably still dead, right? Yeah. Did Flora majorly fuck? He's at least majorly fucking right now. He forced transcendence with Pulse when he's playing well. Is that my fucking... Dude, my computer's getting so hot these days. I wonder if my fan's not working. Holy shit, it's so hot in there. I should... I'm a... Yeah. I should check that. Leave gets killed kill Flora. Hairballs in the computer, yeah, it could be something where I just need to clean a couple of fans. I, once again, they're just rolling. And like, you question how much value Yuckpung is getting. Like, I feel like Yuckpung's just rolling around and dying. They're just like slowly bleeding out to the Hanzo. Like I know they are in a mirror matchup, but I feel like they could get way more value. Well, not even in a mirror matchup. Jimmy's playing the Sombra, so it's going to make it even harder for Yakpung as well. Maybe Yakpung pub to see how much value he's getting. Well, yeah, we can have a look at it. Can Guangguang play Sombra? I don't know how much, if we've seen much. So what happens here? The EMP, EMP Dragon, Transcendence counters it, good play by Jonak. Dragon's gonna force them backwards. I actually remember seeing this bomb actually. I saw the replay of this bomb. How does this kill four? Monk's dead for sure. Yveltal has a shield. Oh, it just catches. Jinmu was there. So, and then Lei Young gets pushed back in. Interesting, interesting. It was pretty, like, Lei Young came back, got hit by that. Two people were in here, and the ball got hit out here. How did Lei Young die? He was out here. I think he must have just walked backwards into the bomb. It don't really matter. That fight was pretty much over anyway, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but still a great bomb.
Okay, trying to do walking up. Friday greater than Yveltal and Diva shielding, yeah. Okay, here comes the rally, they're stepping up. Rally versus rally. All right, I don't know how many times I've seen a 6v6 fight in this room. Oh, I don't like that ultimate usage by Chengdu at all. That transcendence, mind, and rally, like they just overlap like everything. Yeah, Jonek just uses his transcendence later and they're at a better, they're at an advantage, right? Chengdu have used four ults, about to be five ults in this fight. Okay, they eventually get Friday. Alright, you've Eltal. Just murdering people, swinging for the fences. Alright, here we go. Hunters eventually get through that, but they don't have many ults. They only have the EMP. Good zoning ults from Chengdu. Yeah, I don't know about... If I like their ult. Oh, that's a great dragon. That dragon was so good. It kind of like countered the EMP, right? Oh, that bomb went too high. Oh my god, Monk's murdering everyone. That rally up from Yuvelta, that should just be it. What's the score? It's currently 1-0 to the MYXL. Wait, what are you talking about, Gray? Five, four, three, two, one. Pelican has pneumothorax. I don't know what that is. A collapsed lung? Oh, wow. So is it? Is he like in the hospital now? Is he okay? Holy fuck. Is that like a long-term problem? Or is that something that's like, it just happens, it gets fixed, and then you're obviously need to be more like careful, but. Interesting. Well, hopefully it's okay. I'm sure we'll hear more. If that is true, I'm sure we'll get a lot of information out about it. Kind of implies he's had it before, okay. Long term, if you get one, then you're more likely to get it later in life, right? Oh, leave gets Flora? Hello, please let me see. Depends on what causes it, yeah. All right, well, hopefully it's okay. As I said, I, I, I don't even know. Oh, I don't even know what it is, let alone able to speculate on it. So if you want to keep it, if you want to have a look at it, I'm sure uh, Atlanta Range trying to keep people updated and you can probably find out more information from other people. Hopefully he's okay and he's able to play. Okay, so now they got the Widow Pharaoh. We're back to the Widow Pharaoh from uh, Jimmy Leave. This has got to be brutal to try and broke open. This is such a hard thing to fight into, especially playing the McCree. Like, I really think they need, they should, if they just went Somber Tracer, I think would be their best bet. Like, I think that they need to find a way to get onto Monk and Leave here. Because if they can't close that distance, they're just going to be, they're just going to keep getting picked as they try and walk forward. No one can hide from my I don't think you take the Widow Duel. Yeah, if he tries to take the Widow Duel, he's just going to get bodied by the Widow and the Pharah. Like, he's just going to be too much pressure. It could potentially work if you're feeling Alpha, but I don't think it's good. Wobble, wobble, motherfucker. Jay Tension, thank you for the four months. 
This reeks like a full hold here. I don't know how MYXL is planning on dealing with this. They get Jinmu. How do they get Jinmu? Sorry, we'll I want to have a look at this. Oh, it just gets nattoed in two shots. In. Okay, that'll do it. Yeah, Glock him, you Veltal. Oh. Oh, Leaf goes down. Veltal got caught out. Oh, they got the res though, off the bat. Oh, nice boop. Wobble, wobble, nice boop. It was either by the Diva or the Wrecking Ball who gets the boop on the res. Is anyone going to be out of touch? Anyone? They just needed to give Gaga a little bit. That should have been on Yveltal, actually. Yveltal should have been the one to touch that. They just needed to give Gaga a little bit more time to get to the point. Heinz himself, thank you for the two months. I haven't been into Overwatch recently, but take the prime, yo. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Bongo. Uh, they got negative value from that Bongo. Kalis was really impressed me. Yeah, Kalis has been really solid, I think, uh, for the MYXL. He's been a good pickup. I wasn't 100% sold when they decided to pick him up, but it, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Okay, we're holding. So it leaves on the McCree as well. Jimnu's kind of like spawn camping as the Pharah right here. Do you think Shock can get any further in Countdown Cup than in his previous enemy? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Oh. That was a good high noon. Might have been too many ults from the Hunters is my only problem. Like, that was High Noon, Nano, and Barrage. They're not going to have, a, like, an oppressive ultimate. Maybe they can throw a Diva Bomb from Late Young when they try and step over the bridge. Who says that Shock won't lose to Toronto and Vancouver? It's unlikely they'll lose to Shock and Vancouver, but the question is, are they going to be able to qualify for the Countdown Cup? Wow. They don't have an answer to Jinmu playing close here. Someone needs to be able to step out and deal with him. Oh, that was... This is brutal, dude. Throwing the bomb out. Gaga gets stuck as well, but it's not enough. Dude, Jimmu's literally just playing this game for free right now. And this is why McCree isn't the counter to Farah, right? Because, like, the Farah can just do this, right? The McCree has to spend all of his time focused on the Farah, but, like, the Farah can just play safe. Especially on, like, certain points like this. God, the McCree's won. This feels awful. Like, just watching this makes me feel bad for MYXL. Why is no one looking at the Farah? Because they can't deal with it. They, they need the D.Va and the McCree to, like, flank around the side at the same time and apply pressure. Alright, Guangbun goes over the Widow. Let's see what Guangbun can do with this. I don't think Widow is going to work. He's just going to get bullied by Jimmu. Jimmu's just going to get in his face and he's going to die. Oh, that would have been such a good shot. 
Oh, they get, they do get your Veltal. Good play by Kalios. So now Jimmu's gonna have to play more safe because he's not gonna get healed. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, Kwangbong almost lost that. All right, they can just back up. Hunter's gonna just back up and then go for aggressive again. Should Sombra be a good couple blighter to farm Mercy? I don't know what you mean. Counter? No, nah, Sombra's pretty inconsistent against the Pharah Mercy. If they play high enough, it's, it's impossible to make it work. Oh. Literally just landed on his face. Tragic. Lovely so much. He's so good, dude. Thank you very much for money. Nice. And that's the map. That's absolutely. Daily reminder to subscribe. Hell yeah. Like, subscribe on fucking Twitch, on YouTube, all that good stuff. I appreciate it, guys. Now, 1 1. Ready for battle. Oh my god, Bo's awake. Just getting in a more comfy spot, you know? Alright, once again, we're gonna see the Jimmy Farrah. It's interesting that Leave likes to prioritize the Sombra over the Tracer with the Farrah comps. Feather comes in, so they're now playing uh, McCree Sombra. Flora's moved over to McCree. It seems like Feather is the Sombra player for the team. Maybe they think that they need to play Sombra to deal with it. That could make sense. They, they don't want to play the Tracer McCree, they want to play the Sombra McCree. Maybe they want to play Farrah later. Yo, Cuss, would you kiss a homie for 1k? Yeah, probably. You did get timed out and probably deservedly so, but yeah. I'd kiss Anthony on the lips. I think we have. <laughs> Man, I must have been drunk that night. First time I watch a review live, time for all the content that I can watch at 2am, much love. No worries. I love, like, because I don't watch a lot of live streams these days um, Thank you myself very much, as well. I watch so much, like, VOD content when I'm going to sleep. That's really the only time I watch, like, Twitch or YouTube these days when I'm going to sleep. Alright, MYXL doing a pretty good job of dealing with this so far. How did they open that up so early? Yo, Mama Mercy, thank you for the 510 bits. Finally, some content. Some good fucking content. So how do they get this? Jonek goes down before he gets Jinmu. With Jinmu down, Feather gets Yveltal. Uh, so they just got to pick on the combo. It's kind of interesting the way that MYXL does use the nano. They just use it as an anti-air like tool. They just nano the Kree and kill the Pharah every time they do it. It's not a bad counter. We don't see many teams do it, but... I also think Ana is just better against the Pharah in general, right? Like a Pharah Mercy combo than like a Zen or a Bap. So I don't hate it. Let's, watch it. Let's get some fe Feather Tracer here. Jimmu Barrage, press Q to respawn. Flora kind of be pounded on this McCree as well. He's actually doing so much work right now. Hi, pet kitty. Nah, kitty is asleep right now. I don't want to wake him. What do you think of MYXL taking out Gwang? Well, I like it. I think you, you can't watch that last map of Rialto and be like, we should keep the same thing and expect for it to work. So I, I kind of like this, like, Tracer McCree uh, change. Just sort of mix it up. Just do something different. I assume there's, there, there's a different reason as well. Like, it gives them more options maybe with Feather and Flora. Great Diva Bomb by, uh, by Late Young. Also co uh, comboed with Gaga Slam. Clean. I don't know how I feel about this Jinmu Genji. 
I, I do not think the Genji is a good pick. I, I, I don't like Pharah on defense though. I don't think this is a good Pharah map on defense or attack. I think it's just too inconsistent. It's just too much open space, hard, not a lot of cover and stuff like that. So I don't, I would rather see them play Tracer Sombra, but I like, why is Yvelta on Mercy at this point, right? But maybe it's comfort, you know? We all, we all know Jimbu's Genji is cracked and jacked. That's a great nade by, uh, another great nade by, uh, Jonak. Let's get the Flora cam. He is literally the electric cowboy with a hundred extra armor. Like he is immortal. Gotta hit some shots though. <gasps> Leave? Baby, the man still got it. Don't have a, don't have a question, Jonah. He's still got it. Oh. So here's what I get for questioning Jonah for questioning Jinmu. Never again, never again. Just let it happen. I'm sorry, my overlords. I will believe and trust anything you say. Let's keep McCree at 325 health. Yeah, a bit of 100 armor. Casual day. Yeah, he's so fun to watch on the face cams, yeah. Alright, let's go, baby. Naked Blade. Oh, yeah, he's clean. He doesn't need anything else. Anybody kill him. Eminem YXL fan. I'd love to see Jonah get a shot with another boss team. Yeah, I think that's fair. But like, I think it's fine to also be Jonak in this situation. I feel like they can build a lot of great things off of this team. Like, I think Flora is a great look for this team. Yakpon Kalios is, is better. I don't know if it's great. Jimmy's gonna actually gonna switch. So Flora, they actually switch off of McCree. Is Jimmy gonna go Farah? He's gonna go back to the Farah. You, they go Winston Sombra Tracer and he's gonna switch away. That's actually so brutal. I don't love the Pharah against this, but I once again, it's like comfort picks. Oh? Yeah, this is 100% a rebuilding season for the MYXL. Like, you can't forget that this is like... MYXL came into this season not expecting to win or do very well. Like, I think the, the season that they've had is pretty on point with what I assumed they were going to do. I think some people convinced me... Otherwise, that MYXL was going to be really, really good. But as we can tell, like, they might not even make the planes. They're probably not going to make the planes. So, I think this, is, this has been this has been some good looks for them. Oh, great EMP. Oh, and the Nana the Farron as well. That is... That is a room of death. That is House of Pain right there. Preseason scrim. I didn't even think it was scrim bucks. I don't think people were saying MYXL had scrim bucks. People were just really upset at me. Do you guys remember when I did my power rankings? People like people were very upset when I put MYXL as low as I did. But then I, I ended up being right, so it was kind of weird. Um, I don't think it was scrim bucks. I think people were just high on a lot of the players. Yeah, I think the most disappointing team for me this season has probably been Guangzhou. Maybe London. Glads? Glads haven't been that disappointing. They just haven't popped off like we had hoped they had. They would, right? Like, I think Glads and Shock haven't been disappointing as much as just, like, they haven't really... They, they haven't hit the promised land. Oh, nice play by Kalios. That was pretty well played. And they have a rally on the point. They can definitely pull this all... They can make it definitely pull... Oh, never mind. Friday died. And they raise the power. All right, never mind. They're, they're dead. 
Oh, late young bomb. Oh, I thought he was going to end up off the edge. That would have been sick. Oh, Washington. I forgot about Washington. I, 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 yeah, you're right. Washington, I, I blacked them out in my mind. No, never mind. Washington is the most disappointing this season, the team this season. That, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's, they're definitely. For that. For, oh yeah, Florida's been disappointing. I think Washington takes the cake, but I think Guangzhou, I think Guangzhou, London, and, um, the other team that I I just thought of, uh, Florida. How many subs for Lala felt, Matt? If you give me two subs right now, I will I will make my character a Lala Fell. You can if you want to be the the payoff to make me a Lala Fell, then I'll do it. But I can't justify the ten dollars because I know I'm gonna hate it in like a month or two, and I'm gonna have to change back. All right, what do we got? So, Chengdu are going to come out with the... Tracer Sombra, I like this. I like this change. I think Farrah isn't as good on attack here. I think it's very slow, and MYXL can play far away. I think the, the Tracer Sombra will punish Yakpun quite well. Wobble, wobble, motherfucker. <laughs> Matt gifted a sub to... Wait, just give one to a random person. Don't give it to Ninja. Why would you give Ninja a sub in my channel? I don't... I don't oh. Matt's just setting fire to money. Thank goodness Ninja can finally afford a sub. And Pokemane. I tried to do something good where Matt would pay it forward into my channel and we would do and I got fucking ninja and Pokimane. Lala fell. Fine. I will get I will take a picture of my Lala fell later, Matt. God. I hate this. I hate everything about it. I should have chosen the terms and conditions a lot more stringently when I came to this. Yeah, this is the problem with the Hunter's comp, right? Is like, if if Yuckpong just gets pressured away, they're just in trouble, right? Like, so let's look at this back and like actually do some talk shit, get hit. Oh my god. Yeah, like, they're just getting pressured away. Yakpung's taking too much pressure. They have to keep disengaging, going, going, going. Yakpung eventually dies. They're just getting cornered. And this is why you don't see a lot of this Winston Anna Brig these days. It can work on, like, Anubis and stuff like that where you can play... You can set your tempo. But NYXL with this comp just can't control space. And then they just get run over, right, by the Hunters. Matt's not even a tall enough. No, well, here's, here's the reason I don't feel as bad about switching to a Lala Fell. You know, I'm supporting my friends, you know. Matt's essentially a Lala Fell. So I'm just, you know, standing in solidarity with, with uh, short folk like Matt. It's just a good friend. How tall is Kasa? I'm 6'1". Okay, leave. Let's get some tracer action. Oh, y how does Yveltal die? Yveltal, we're gonna have a talk about this. This was such. This was gonna be such a good fight for them. Oh god, that that's Frowny Town. That wasn't great. Oh, he just boomed him. Oh, he got hacked as well. Nice play by the MYXL. I'm surprised they went without Yveltal. 
Don't give a tick, MYXL. Don't give a tick. Whatever you do, don't give a tick. Alright, they're good. Matt is what, 4-9? Four, 4-7? Four, Last I checked. All right, let's go. We love you, Matt. All right. Oh, EMP's not great. Like, Yakpong was all... Maybe he thought he could get it off before the problem. That is a great Graviton surge, though. By... By Lei Young. That is a problem. Oh, good... Good Pulse Bomb by Flora. Flora's Pulse Bomb attach rate has been the most impressive thing of his race, though. Oh, Feather got the touch. Friday on the touch. They can come back into this. Pretty good. This has been a great soul by the MY. Oh, that's a problem. Oh? Unless... Dude, Friday almost got this. Look at this from Friday. Friday almost gets the shield block on the Transcendence and gets uh, gets them killed. Look at it. So let's look at what happens here. So in the Transcendence, Monk is standing with his shield between Yveltal and Monk. What that does is Yveltal's not getting the Transcendence during this time. Yveltal fortunately just gets out of the way enough for Friday to get healed. That was almost crazy by Friday. Oh, Nano under the Brig. Going Raid Boss. I think it would have been better to go on to Flora. Oh, though, that's a problem. I was like, Man YXL might be able to hold this Mines Rally come out. Nope. It is over. All right. It's 2-1 to the uh, Chengdu Hunters. Chengdu Hunters, and this is what I like about the Chengdu Hunters as well in this Countdown Cup. It's not just that they're great at the Fire Mercy, right? They're great at the Fire Mercy, but can also switch to Tracer Sombra. They can. They are very versatile with the way they play. The only thing that we haven't really seen from them is the Arisa comps. But they can get away with not playing the Arisa comps, I think. Shield will block trance. Yes, shield does block trance. Sound barrier as well. Exactly, yeah. A, a shield counts as line of sight. So if you have a big enough shield between the transcendence and the whoever's trying to get the transcendence, it will block it. Zaya bubble does the same thing. Funnily enough, you can stand between people with a Zaya bubble and it can work, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. It was really big in GOATS where Zaya players would stand in the middle of the, the grav to block the transcendence. Obviously, the biggest issue is when you're standing between people in a transcendence and using your bubble. If it breaks, you probably, you can die, right? So it's obviously a risky play. Ready for battle. Wobble, wobble, motherfucker. Four, three, two. Awesome, Kieran, thank you for the three months. Love the content. Kasi, you got some audience in China. I, I've i heard. People keep telling me I'm big in China. Obviously, I don't, I don't really frequent you know, like any of the, like the Chinese forums or anything, or like I don't go on there, so I don't know. But if I've heard people have been making videos on, of my content, so hello! Ni hao. All right. So we got the Fair Mercy coming out from the Hunters. We got Guangbung back in to play the McCree. We didn't really see the effects of why they played Feather on Volskaya. What do you guys think the reason they played Feather on Volskaya? Is it the Sombra? The Tracer Sombra? I guess so. Interesting. Zerg the great thing for the prime gaming sub. I don't think Rascal will get playtime in the Countdown Cup, no. Especially not with EQO playing as well as he is. And Rascal's probably just the best May on the team. He'd probably only come in to play May, but May is not really being played right now. Alright, Gaga goes down. Where's your Veltal? Did your Veltal die? How's he alive? There's no way he lives through this, right? There's no way. There's no way. Dude, he's a fucking ninja. K 
Okay. Jimu's kind of doing it. Yveltal is so far away from... I feel like they're doing a good job. And this is why you play the Tracer Wrecking Ball. It feels like Yveltal's always having to leave Jimu to go back to his team. Zoning Barrage is okay. I didn't hate the Barrage. I didn't love the Barrage, but I didn't hate it. Yveltal was peeling for Monk, yeah, and that's a, that's the best way to deal with the Pharah, right? Because it's very hard to punish a Pharah Mercy. But if you if you just put pressure and force the... the what? What? Okay. I don't know why he decided to take the hard route. I feel like he played himself. Guangbung kind of popping off. Good flank by Guangbung. Let's get a remake. Hey, well, the thing is, if the bot once the bomb goes off, then the diva can remake. He could have just used his conk there. There was no like. There's obviously there's obviously dangers of hiding behind that phone booth, but I think the the dangers of conking yourself away like he did is is higher. Alright, nice play. Oh, and the EP goes down. That should just guarantee this first fight. Uh, first point. This first map, no, this is the last map, fourth map. Why is Bull better than Monkey? Uh, Bull is more self-sustainable than Monkey. Because of the way, the speed at which Bull can move around the map, he's, it's harder for Bull to be punished, and he can move around and get Megas on his own. Uh, he also doesn't have really much of a head hitbox, which is a big deal. Uh, like a headshot hitbox. So therefore, the Wrecking Ball is a, a lot easier to just stay alive um, and has a lot more defensive opportunities. So Winston can generally do more damage and be more punishing, but it, you need to invest resources to protect the Winston. So you only really play Winston if you're diving as a collective unit and you can feed off of one another. But yeah, obviously there are a lot of things that Wrecking Ball does that Winston doesn't do and all those kind of things. But for the most part, it's the self-survivability of why people play Wrecking Ball over Winston. Oh, nice Nano. That is an important time to Nano. Woo! There it is. And that's going to... So that's Mind and Rally that got used to counter that. Uh, obviously, they use the Nano Barrage. But you take that trade if you are the, uh, the Hunters. I wish Blizzard adjusted balance with hitboxes. I feel like they do a pretty good job of adjusting hitboxes because like hitboxes are something that people don't really talk about when they talk about like the strength of a character, right? Like Anna would be a terrible, I think Anna would be a very bad hero if she had the same hitboxes as Zenyatta, right? One of Anna's biggest strengths is that her hitbox is really awkward to shoot at. Um, and same thing with a lot of people, like Widowmaker wouldn't be anywhere near as good as if her, if her hitbox was that big. Her being so thin, makes her hitbox like quite interesting so it, it, it'll be interesting i don't think you can make zen's hitbox uh smaller and make it easier for zen to survive without making zen Yada broken right one of zen Yada's hitbox being so fucking big is one of the things that makes zen Yada so hard to play What's the score? The score is currently 2-1 to the Chengdu Hunters. Oh, you see, Jinmu's just putting out so much pressure with no threat right now. Oh, Yakpong just got murdered. Well played. Like, MYXL used, uh, like, used a, a couple of ults, like the High Noon, the Pulse Bomb, and they just can't get close to the distance. I think Yakpong needs to get off this Winston. They, he just can't stay alive against what the Hunters are playing. In your opinion, who's the best nano ult? Nano blade, for sure. Good play by Jinmu. That, like, even though he dies, it doesn't matter. He'll be back by the time. As long as they punish the cart, clear out the cart, Kalis is going to die. Jinmu will be back before that happens. I was going to say, is Jinmu going to switch? <sighs> Why does he keep going back to that? Why Why the Genji? What is it about Genji that DP, Flex DPS players are like, bro, trust me, this is going to work. I fucking hope this doesn't work. I really hope it doesn't work. 
Nano Winston. Is it has to get Nano to stay alive. Bad Jinmu. Cause I always molds at the Genji, cause it's such a throw. I always feel like it's a throw. Yo, Shellfish, thank you for the gifted sub. My best Nato, you mean trans I of course, yeah, transcendence. So literally plays one round as Genji. It's literally every flex DPS as well. Bro, just let me play one round of Genji. It's like, no, that's that's counterintuitive. You'd want to get your old if you're gonna play Genji. Just one round, bro. I know I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go Genji. Fucking and then they always remain silent. As soon as it fucking flops, you don't hear them at all. They're just quiet. They just switch without I saying a word. I would use my Babo box for a hot take, but I bet most of them on you winning in ranked. Hot yeah. take. Creative is on par with someone like Shu, Monk, or Gangamjin. He just lacks a decent main support. He could be top five with a decent main support. Interesting. I don't hate that sentiment. Like, I actually don't hate that sentiment. I, I can see where you're coming from. I, I remember it as a hot take. They're using this as a hot take. So it's not like, I don't think it's 100% true, but I can see where you're coming from. Like, I, 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 like creative potentially on a different team where he, the backline is supported more or he's, he's been able to put in a situation carry. He could be as good as like Shu Gangnam, uh, Shu Gangnam General Monk. I, I don't think he's there yet. I haven't seen anything that gets him to that point, but you know, not bad. It's gonna shoot. Well, here's my hot take. I think people overrate Shu for this season. I don't think Shu has been that good this season. I think he is a great player, and trust me, I think he's great on the Gladiators, and I wouldn't replace him. I think he's struggled this season. I think he's had a couple of really bad games, especially earlier on in the season. Um, I, I think that's it, it's hard to, like I would not put Shu this season I would not put Shu in the same category as Monk I think Monk has been better than Shu this season who's your top flex supports this season my top flex supports this season would be like Iziaki Fielder Iris, it's hard to put Iris in there because I feel like he's just like only played BAP. I would say Izzy Arkanefield would be my top two though. Alarm, I don't know if I, have we seen Alarm pop off? Like, okay, have we seen Alarm really pop off that much this season? Yes, we have, have we? <sighs> All right, let, 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 while we're here, I want to see what Watson has to say about this. I want to see if Watson can just completely clean this up. Let's just look at support to begin with. Okay, so Shu Shu skewed. Obviously, this is very skewed towards his thing. He's at nine, which is pretty good considering how Philly's done overall this season. Let's go like uh, Anna. Anna alarm is five. Zenyatta, Alarm is four. Baptiste. Alarm is seven. Moira, I would say would be the last one. He's a nine. <sighs> Watson doesn't really sleep. Yeah, I said, I'm just using this as a basis. I'm not using this as like a, oh, see, Watson says like, you li He's still top tier. He, okay, he, here's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm not saying he's top tier. Like, I'm not saying he's top tier. Alarm would be like in the top five. If he's not in anyone's top, if he's not in your top five list of best flex supports, we're talking about like the best of this season. I don't know if I can put anyone. I'm saying who's been at Izayaki and Fielder's level. Has anyone else been at Fielder and Izayaki's level this year? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of great honorable mentions below them. Maybe Monk. Yeah, maybe Monk. I think you could definitely make that. Khan, Khan's been really good. I think he's just below them though. Like, Khan has been very, very good though. I, I, I am a, a Khan simp. Crimzo, Crimzo's been good, but he hasn't been, he hasn't been at the level of Fielder or Izayaki. Thank you very much for money. 
Can Iziaki or Fielder pull out the McCree or Lucio? Didn't think so. Yeah, but either can Violet. It's not, not a great article argument at all. Uh, T, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm sure this has already been mentioned, but I'm so mad that they didn't bring back Atlantic Mercy skin during the event. And uh, maybe they'll do it eventually. I hope they do. Alright, let's not get too sidetracked. Right, let's not get too sidetracked. I, as I said, I don't love ranking people too thing. I think there's been a lot of great honorable mentions, but my point is, I think Fielder and Iziaki have been the best. I think if you were doing like a tier list, right? I think it would go Fielder, Iziaki, and then there would be a tier break, and then there would be the people below them, right? So that, I think that's where I'm gonna end up with that. Fielder is D tier. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Never doing a fucking tier list again. With players. Alright, let's see how the Hanzo goes. So we got the rally. The rally for I'm surprised NYXL just didn't get any of the kills in here. Okay, never mind. Then they, they get the kills. Yeah, I was gonna say, with the rally going, they should have been able to easily close up all oh, the hunters in that small room. Oh Iris, I talked about Iris. I think I the biggest drawback for Iris is that we haven't seen enough Anoral Zen from him this season. He's played like 75% Baptiste. Time All right. Monk gets stuck by Flora. Just Flora doing th uh, those things. They always play fucking slow comps? Yeah. Oh, no, as I said, I'm not doubting his Anna or Zen. I'm not saying Iris can't play his Anna or Zen. I would just say we haven't seen it enough in the Overwatch League this season to give me that confidence, you know what I mean? You can't be that good at Baptiste and then suck at Anna Zen, right? Oh, Jinmu gets... How does Jinmu log Flora? I feel like I'm going to be upset by this shot. Oh, so they went to the Orisa. I actually... Well, like... I, here, here is what I was doubting them for. They're playing the Orisa. I actually like the Orisa Hanzo strat. They're showing that they can play it right here. I like it. I like it. Sorry, I hadn't pay, caught that yet. Oh, that was kind of filthy. It wasn't that bullshit, though. No! Oh, 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 God. I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. I, I thought he was in the pit. Oh, nice bomb by Kalios. Aye, this has been pretty good by the MYXL so far. Like, they're doing a great job of holding. These are the points. Like, I sort of say, you know how, like, the Winston Anna works really well in Anubis and Hanamura. This is another one of those points where, because it is so, like, linear, the defense, you can play very defensive and you can choose the time to engage, right? And that allows them to just nano yuck pung in, choose their engages with the Diva Bombs, go forward. That's why I, where I really think these Winston comps get value. So I actually like the Winston comp on this third point. They're actually going to play Hanzo McCree. So they're playing very defensive. This is going to be quite hard for the MYXL because they don't have the Nano or the Primal here. So that could come back to bite. That's an early rally. Holy shit. I, that was way too early. Oh, I guess MYXL is playing close enough that it actually worked. I think as soon as they pop that rally, this play is, 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 it should go out the window. This play should not have happened as soon as they dropped the rally. Because you see right here, like he throws the nade. It's a great nade, but it only goes through their armor. So because it only goes through the armor, it literally doesn't do anything. And then he just trades his life for free. And oh God, they have the card as well. The card's moving. Leaf does go down, which is a problem. Gaga can't die. Oh, Gaga dying is a problem. I don't know if they needed that dragon. Wow. Yakpung, Flora, and uh, Guangbung did a great job of getting some picks on the way out. He can't run off the rally. He could have hit. He could have easily hit here and then tried to make like a run for it through this this way. I don't. I think he could have, like, Jonak could have run in that situation. Oh, the leave legs. Oh, fl rare floral whiff. Oh, that was filthy. That I don't even know if he meant to shoot it at the Anna. All right, there's the rally. Oh, nice. Gets logged. Dude, Jinmu's just murdering everyone. 
Oh yeah, that was that was a risky play. I think M1XL might have had to have done that play. They had to go for something different, right? Hunters had the rally. They had to go for something wild, but it just did not work. It's not really a throw. Like, as I said, like they were going into that fight. They didn't have anything to counter the rally from the hunters. They were just going to be able to walk up and do a ton of damage. So something had to get done. It just did not work. Who casted this game? I'm not sure, actually. Leave MVP. I think the three MVPs in my eyes are Lip, Leave, and Fearless. I think you can choose any one of those threes. My personal pick is Fearless. Maybe I'm a main tank simp, and maybe it's just because, like, I think... It just what he did in the May Melee and the June Joust, I think, was just incredible. But I think he definitely fell off towards the back half of the season. So... I, I agree that if, if Leave hard fucks right in this tournament and just dumps as everyone i might flip to leave and this like like that's it could happen but i don't know he's gonna have to hard fuck like it's gonna have to be it's gonna have to be a lot Fate on ball for MVP? No, I don't think Fate's ever had an MVP performance. I think what he did on the Wrecking Ball to force it in the June Joust is great, and he is he's a great supporting main tank, right, on the Wrecking Ball, and I think he does his job almost better than anyone else in terms of doing his job, but I just... I don't think he puts up MVP performances, if you know what I mean. Like, Fearless makes something out of nothing like time and time again and that's what makes him an MVP an oh. Iziaki nah it shouldn't be MV Iziaki Iziaki's too inconsistent Jerks needs to force Ana too much it could not it could also be not just him who wants to force the Ana right run leap run Tragic. Alright, where's Jimu that? Oh okay, yeah, he's counter diving. Pelican, Pelican is not the MVP. I think Pelican is in my eyes definitely rookie of the year, but he's not MVP. Pelican has not been better than Leaf. Just like regardless of everyone else around it, Pelican and Leaf play like a very similar role. Pelican has not been better than Leaf this season. And I think if you do think he's been better than Leave, you are using pure recency bias. Or you're not paying attention to APAC. You can have different opinion, uh, opinions. And that's it. Like, I, I, just because I think something doesn't mean it's 100% right. Like, I can be wrong. You can have different opinions to me. There's a t like, as I said, if you said fearless lip or leave, I think those are all three completely valid op uh, options. Jack Punk didn't really get much value out of that primal. Oh, that's a good bomb by Lei Young. Lei Young's bombs are really good. So leave is getting killed a lot, but I feel like he's doing a great job of like making himself a threat. Oh, Monk gets caught by the bomb. Right is in an awful spot. Dude, leave it. How many people has Leaf killed in this uh, defense on Hanzo? Like, I don't understand how he just keeps getting so many kills. He's in denial of greatness. Oh, Mora, yeah, I, I don't think anyone else should get Rookie of the Year this year. I think early on, we, we were saying, like, Shy and Gaga, but I personally think Gaga hasn't been as good this season or like towards the back half of the season and even in the first half he was good but he wasn't like like he was great but he wasn't exceptional um and i think shy's just sort of been forced off of good heroes and hasn't been able to have those carry uh potentials the perfect gaga shield wait what bro what are we gaga bro like what are we doing here bruh what are we playing ranked Jesus, man. Oh!
Jonak has been very good on the Ana. You can't deny that. Khan, I think Khan is a good... Uh, I, he's definitely a candidate for Rookie of the Year. Um, I don't think he should get it over Palatine, though. I think he could have got it if Paris had uh, better runs. I, I, as I as I always say time and time again, when I consider Rookie of the Year, when I consider MVP performances, I will always... I, I feel like I have this thing in my mind where I want to see them do it in the playoffs. And I know that's hard for some players because they are great players on average teams, but until I see them really fuck on the playoffs against the de some of the best teams when it matters the most, I find it hard to really give them that credit where credit is due. That dragon's a problem. Just hearing that dragon come out, I knew it was going to be in his face. MVP, yeah, MVP is before. It is like a regular season. But, you know, we, we have like... We have four different tournament uh, cycles that happen. Is there any consideration for Monk? No. I don't really put Monk in there. Because this is Monk's rookie year, right? Why does a part of me think he was like on Chengdu last year? He is a rookie, right? Yeah. Dude, the threat of the Hanzo Farah with the Arisa is actually just absurd. Like, leave or Jinmu just kill. Like, somewhat one of them is going to kill you. Kyo, Lynx, and Molly. I think I might be mixing Monk up with Molly on the team. Yeah. Obviously, Molly's on the Shanghai Dragons now, but yeah. Who wants to leave? You want to see some leave, Hanzo? Let's do it. How did the playoffs and plans actually work? Cus, can you please explain to me? I'm kind of new there. Watch like, yeah, I can do that because I can sort of inform everyone. Uh, so anyone that doesn't understand how it works. So the way the playoffs and the plans work, actually, let's bring up uh, this because this will give it a uh, quite well. Uh, so here's the regular season, right? So this green line, so two teams from the east and three teams from the west above these green lines are guaranteed for the playoffs. And the playoffs are essentially like, it's, how many teams is it? I think it's going to be eight teams. Only eight teams go to the official playoffs, which will be happening in Dallas. Um, as far as I'm aware, if I'm remembering that correctly. So all of the playoffs will be happening in Dallas. All eight of those teams will be in a LAN, and that is great, right? These, uh, the two teams from the East and the three teams from the West are guaranteed for those playoffs um, for in Dallas at the end of the regular season. These other teams below... Uh, why Dallas? It's just the area that they're doing it. It's probably the only place that they can do it. Below this green line and above this yellow line are the teams that are eligible for the play-ins. And what the play-ins are, it'll be another online tournament where these teams will have the opportunity to go to the playoffs. There will be three spots in the playoffs. I don't know... Actually, is some, this, can someone clarify this for me? Is it the three East teams play for the last spot in the play-ins and the, th uh, the three uh, six West teams play for the last two spots in the West? Or do the East and the West come together and play an online? I guess it's probably the East versus... East plays East and West plays West. It'd be East versus East and West versus West, right? These three teams will play for one spot. And these six... Yeah, that makes way more sense. Because otherwise, how are they going to do it with ping and online? Yeah, yeah. So that makes more sense. Um, so that means these three teams that make it for the play-ins in the East will play against each other for the final spot in the playoffs. And these six teams um, in the West will play for the last two spots in the West. So that's what the play-ins is. So these guys will do this online after the Countdown Cup happens, but before the playoffs, these teams will play, they will do the play-ins, and then there will be three more spots up for grabs combined from the West and the East to make it to the playoffs. And then once those final eight teams happen in the playoffs, I believe we just go into like an eight-team bra eight bracket double elimination playoff run, as far as I'm aware, um, which will be hype. That's going to be really cool to see an eight teams at LAN in the playoffs. I'm so fucking high for the playoffs. And that's how it works, in case you weren't aware. And that's why uh, some of these matches are very important in the Countdown Cup. 
first of all, A, to either qualify for the Countdown Cup to get those bonus points, or to just finish out their regular season games with a couple of wins to guarantee them spells uh, either in the play-ins or the playoffs. Because there is a pretty... There is a... There's a couple of spots that are heavily up for grabs. Uh, obviously, the most obvious one is in the uh, West. They're all playing for that third spot. Obviously, Atlanta and the uh, Dallas Fuel are pretty much guaranteed in the West. But for the Shock, the Gladiators, or the Houston Outlaws, they're all playing for that third spot. Because not being able to, not having to play in the planes will be a big advantage. When are the playoffs? The, uh, the playoffs are early September. The planes are sometime before that. Oh, uh, that's a lot of faith being put into Guangbong to somehow kill everybody. September, oh wait, is it the 16th to the 19th of playoffs and the play-ins are September 5th? Am I, I might have mixed that up. Or like sometime around there. I didn't realize that. Uh, I thought they were further away from each other. I don't know the dates, as you tell. Like, I just don't. They'll happen. I'll show up to work and they'll happen. Ah, oh, the play-ins are the early September and the playoffs. Okay, that makes sense. That's where I'm getting the mix-up. Friday isn't that good in general. Friday's okay. Like, yeah, Friday this season has been okay. Maybe it would be better on a better team. It's hard to know. Jim, we're just murdering everyone. Yeah, they, this damage, they need to... I think NYXL just needs to get off of this McCree. Like, McCree's just not going to be able to do anything against Hanzo, Farah, Orisa. Like, he's literally just... And it, fucking Yakpung's just caught turbo feeding. There's just too much damage coming out from the Chengdu Hunters. And that's it. And that's that match. Uh, NYXL, they look okay. They're, they don't have a lot of adaptation in them uh, with the way that they're playing the game. And they're sort of relying on Guangbong to kill everyone. Well, Chengdu Hunters look great. They look good at the Tracer Sombra, the Farah, and the uh, and the Orisa. We saw that Orisa Hanzo from them as well. That is why I'm so high on the Chengdu. You, go, you just watch that match and they are so, so good at the game. So awesome to see from them. I'm excited to see uh, Chengdu play again this weekend and make their way through the uh, playoffs for the Countdown Cup. Hope you guys found this one interesting. I did go on a lot of tangents about a lot of random shit. I hope you guys don't mind and found it interesting slash informative. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there. La, 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 la. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.